Hello. Um, thanks for coming. I'm glad, I'm glad you're wondering why I've got you here tonight. Oh no, um, I, I am a kind of interim CTO tele tech, uh, technology advisor for various companies. Um, so I'm going to take you through business strategy in about 100 slides. No, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to talk about using bot, chatbots in a DevOps environment. So a lot of what I end up doing is digital transformation for big companies. And that means embracing DevOps. And one thing that I found incredibly useful is chat ops, which people don't use enough. And so hopefully you're going to get a taste for what chat ops is, and that's using chatbots to help automate your DevOps tasks. And we're going to develop a chatbot together live with code, no vendors, no magic. Uh, well, kind of magic, but we'll see. And it's going to automate some uh, a DevOps procedure. So here we go. So we're going to use how, as I was just said, so chatbots, how we can use to automate security procedures and create our own chatbot to break glass. So a gla break glass procedure is a, you know, an emergency procedure. So we're going to show how to automate that. What technology are we going to use today? Well, we're going to use Amazon. Who uses Amazon here in production? Oh, loads of people. Great. So everyone should know Amazon Web Services. Chatbots. Um, so we could use Slack here. I could have picked a few, but Telegram's got great APIs. Anyone using Telegram as a IM? One per? No one. No one. Everyone should use Telegram. It's great. It's a great instant messenger. Very secure. They're not owned by Facebook. It's, the, it's really good. Um, <laughs> We can do some provisioning with Terraform. Anyone use Terraform? Okay, lots of people know what Terraform is. So we can use that to provision all of these pieces together. Um, so I don't have to do so much typing in manual consoles and we can just kind of spin up a cloud and do a chatbot and all this magic together. And we're going to do some node code running in lambdas. Anyone, everyone, some? Okay, good. So not everyone knows everything here. Right, so emergency procedure. Let's figure, let's like invent an emergency procedure that we're going to automate with our bot. Um, I'm going to talk a briefly about Bastion hosts. Now, this is a bit of a blast from the past, possibly for us new serverless kids in the world here. But in the old world where we used to have to run servers, and probably a lot of us still have to run servers, you create these things called Bastion hosts. And they're these servers that kind of live outside of your lovely secured area over here in the private cloud. We have a public thing out here that we can SSH into. Um, and we use that to then access our servers. So we only really need to harden this thing. This thing is really, really needs to be secured. Um, and if we can get in there, then we can get to our other servers and we can look at logs and we can do all that stuff that because we haven't invested in our in our log monitoring solution that we should have done. But, but so we're gonna have to SSH into our private servers. The problem is, right, there's a problem, there's a there's kind of a problem with these things, right? Is that they're they're a weakness. If you can get into here, you can get into your system. So this great idea. Let's just not have Bastion servers. Right? It's sim simple in concept. If we don't have a Bastion server, then we can't get into our private cloud. Simple, yeah, but we kind of still need to get in there somehow. So what do we do? Why don't we have transient, transient Bastion servers, right? So when we need this break glass procedure, we've got all the hell's broken loose. We don't know what's going on. It's our final resort. We can't do things through pipelines. We've lost visibility. We actually need to go on the servers to see what's going on. Let's run our break glass procedure and we'll spin up a temporary Bastion server, which will give us access to our back servers and then we'll kill it, kill it away afterwards. Um, and this is of course something you can do quite easily in Amazon. You've got Elastic servers, we can do this, right? Um, and we can secure it, we can audit it, and we can see quite what's going on. So how would we implement this in Amazon? So, auto-scaling groups. Anyone know auto-scaling groups? So you kind of create um, one of these things. Normally, typically you'd create these to say, I always want you to keep me 10 EC2 instances running at any one time. If anyone dies or I kill one, it'll put it back to 10. In this case, we'll create an auto-scaling group of, with a size zero. So we initially start with no servers. And when we want to do, when we want to create our Bastion server, we set its capacity to one, and the auto scaling group magically creates us an uh, uh, EC2 instance with access to our, our private servers. Now we don't actually know, we have no permissions to create this thing manually at all. We can only do it through this auto scaling group. So we need to have permissions to set the capacity to one to be able to even create this thing. So we've got another layer of defense. And then when we finish with it, what do we do? Well, then we set the capacity to zero, and it destroys the instance, and now we're secure. We can't, no one can get back into our private cloud. It's, it's pretty awesome. So let's do this first, right? So quick talk about Terraform. So, some, quite a few people put their hands up and said they know what Terraform is, but, but it's, um, it's how you can do configurations code. So you can use Terraform to actually work with many clouds, not just Amazon, Google, um, and actually many other products too, um, to in code decide what our servers are going to look like, what things are going to get installed on them, what size they are, where they, what permissions are going to be in there. And so we use, we use HashiCore Terraform to create this thing. And there's three kind of stages to this. We write our configuration. We, we t ask Terraform to do a plan. And a plan kind of gives us, a, just tells us what it's going to do. Oh, I'm going to create this server. And then we do apply and it actually goes and creates that 
that server. We get this predictable, um, repeatable um, pipeline for creating infrastructure. In this case, we're going to use this to create our Bastion server. So um, there's, uh, this little repo has got all this code. So if you want to have a look at this afterwards, you can. Um, in this folder, we have an example Bastion. So before we get onto the bot, all the fun stuff, we'll talk about just this Bastion server on its own. Quick whiz through some Terraform scripts. Um, which is a fun part for sure, right? So here's our security group that we're creating. Um, so we're basically saying we're going to create an instance. It's going to have port 22 open, so we can SSH into this thing from from anywhere, right? Now again, we can lock this down in reality if we want, if we know we've got some IP addresses that we're going to be connecting this to. But of course, I'm here. I'm on some conference Wi-Fi, so hopefully this is going to work for us. But I need to open that up. But it's going to be temporary, and then egress anything coming out. Um, going to create some key pairs. I'm create a public key in here, and I'm going to create an AMI, or, or get hold of an AMI. So this is a mechanism with Terraform to say, find me the most recent AMI that's like this. It's one of the Amazon AMI templates. And it will, create, it will find me the latest one in Amazon, and then I will create the resource. Get this thing, create the resource. This is actually create the, create the, um, the launch template that's going to be used to create my instances. So this essentially says, when... We create the instance, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be called this. It's going to use this image, which is the latest uh, Amazon template for the instance. It's going to be a nano, tiny, tiny server. Um, and it's going to use the security group that we created earlier. And it's going to use this, this SSH key that's been created kind of dynamically for this. And then the final piece of this picture is the auto scaling group. So we create this thing, we're going to put it in the one availability zone, and we're going to set it to capacity zero. That means it's not going to create any servers at this point, and it's going to have a max size of one. It means we can only ever create one Bastion server, no more than that, and we can take it back down to zero again here. Um, and the launch template, we point to the launch template that we just talked about. So just in summary there, we're going to create this auto scaling group that's going to start with zero capacity. When we set it to one, it uses this launch template to create this image, which is using this template from Amazon and using this, the security, this security group and open all the ports. All right. So it's a bit of code, but it means we can do it at the same time, same every time. So let's do it. So here we go. The moment of truth. Oops, I'm in the, I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Right, I'm in the right place. So Terraform apply. Can we see this? It's big enough. Yep. Sorry, plan. We'll do a plan. We're doing so plan will tell us what it's going to do so it's looking into my amazon and it's saying it's going to create some of these things right so if we in fact i'll do an apply because it will tell me this again anyway but you could do this to dry run and see what is this actually going to do for me so we're doing a terraform apply it's going to show me this as well and it's going to ask me yes or no and i'll visit, i'll take you through it then right so if we just scroll back a bit you can see these are the things it's going to do it's going to create me this bastion with all, all this stuff that it's picked up from default. So we should be able to see some of the things we recognize in here, our sizes, our availability zones. It's going to create me a key pair with that. It's going to um, create my use that template and create this bastion. And these, these are the security groups, the 22, the port 22 open in and out here. So we'll say yes, right? So this is now in Amazon creating me this security group. It shouldn't take very long. And this bit you'll have to trust. There we go. Okay, so it's created that. So now we've started our, our mission. So you could you could actually stop here. So you could use this in your procedure. Um, if you had that in your if you had that script in your um, Circle CI pipeline, your Jenkins pipeline, you could use this as your break glass procedure. And all you need to do is change the configuration to one on your auto scaling group, or use some mechanism to set that scaling to one. It will create your Bastion server. You can SSH to it and access the rest of your system. So you don't need a bot for this if you don't want to. You could just do this, and you could do that through GitHub through a pull request and you have a full audit of what's going on. But that's not very much fun, so we're gonna do it with a bot instead. So what do we want our chat bot to do? So we're gonna ask it to do the break glass, and it's gonna go sure. It's gonna set the capacity to one on that auto scaling group. It's gonna create us our Bastion host, and we're gonna be able to SSH into the Bastion host, and everyone's gonna go, wow, that's amazing. And we're gonna get a massive round of applause because it's gonna work and the demo gods are gonna shine. But that's what we do. It's basically, it's gonna to respond to this, and it's gonna do create our Bastion host for us. It's also kind of fun to make it do something else too. So it's gonna kind of watch this now. And when it's been open for too long, it's gonna just shut it down. So when we forget to close down this Bastion host, the bot's gonna be watching and the bot's gonna go, okay, we're gonna set it to zero. And I have a very short one minute time on this for today to show it so it will happen while we're waiting. And then we'll set the capacity to zero for us, destroy the Bastion host and boot us off the server because it's been open too long. 
Right, what now? We've got to name this thing. Right, it's the hardest thing. Two hard, prob hard problems. Caching validation, naming things, and off by one errors. Um, so what are we going to call this thing? Well, my eldest son, who's now 20, as James can remember him being born, um, when he was 10, and last time I gave this talk he was in the audience, so I could embarrass him perfectly, he's a big fan of Monsters Inc, and in Monsters Inc there's this character called Roz, and she's just, I'm watching you, Wazowski, that's what she does, she watches, so this is what this bot's doing, right, it's watching, so we'll call it Roz. So this bit I'm not going to show you live, but what you do to create a Telegram bot, you go to a thing called the Bot Father. So that's a great name, right? But you, you go start a conversation with the Bot Father and you say, give me a new bot. And you give it a name, you give it a username, and it gives you some access keys, which would appear there, but I've kind of hidden them so you can't see my secret keys. Um, and the APIs are really great in Telegram, so it's very easy to, um, to automate things with this. So, <coughs> what now? So we've now got our bot. We have to create an, an endpoint for the bot to call in. It's just, an, just a REST call, a REST endpoint that needs to be created. Um, and we have to tell the bot, we have to tell Telegram that this is the web, this is the hook. So we have to make this call to say, set web hook and call me back on this endpoint when anything happens, when anyone talks to me. Uh, and it gets a post back, basically. Um, and we, use, we can validate the user, we can perform the action we want to do, and then we reply back using the bot API. There's a bit of a gotcha here. Um, it's got to respond really quickly, otherwise Telegram sends it again. So Telegram's got an auto, auto send thing, and if you don't reply quickly, and it's kind of it's like a second, it's a very short period of time. So you can't kind of wait for this Bastion host to come up before replying. It'll, it'll actually send it again and keep sending it again, going, you're not speaking to me, you're not speaking to me. So we've got to beware for that. We have to respond on this webhook at 200 within a second, and then, and then kind of asynchronously do our request. So we have to bear that in mind when we do this. So we'll do this serverless. I know we've got this, this damn it annoying bastion host thing, but we'll do this bit serverless. This will be fun, right? So we've got our Telegram um, bot does a post into an API gateway on Amazon, which, create, which invokes a lambda, which, call, which calls, that's the capacity to one on the auto scaling group, which creates our bastion host. And we're all good. We're all good. Now the trick to get the one second is you make this lambda call itself. So the first thing the API gateway calls it and it goes, calls itself and returns 200. So then you kind of respond back quickly along the line and then this, lamp, this second invoke of the lambda actually does the, does the job. So there's a little trick you can use. And then we've got the I'm watching you Wazowski bit. So we have a CloudWatch event which runs every minute and it triggers the lambda which has a look in the autoscaling group for anything that's got a capacity of one and sets it to zero and destroys this thing. So now there's this in completely independent process really that shed, that's running, checking to see if we've left this Bastion host open at any time and it will close it for us. Infrastructure as code again, so we've got some um, Terraform scripts we can go through, the moment you've all been waiting for. Um, so what do we have to do here? API gateways are a real pain. I haven't put every script here because it's actually a real pain to set up, but here are some of the kind of big things to, to watch, right? This is a great little tip. So when we create the stage, which kind of represents the endpoint, um, you can do this bit, which is a bit of magic in the middle, which is a, an exec. Once it, when this thing gets created, you can call this local exec when it's created, and this one when it destroys. And so we can run the curl command to set the webhook on Telegram. So as this thing creates, it will automatically register within Telegram. So then Telegram knows to call back on this, on this API endpoint. And when we destroy this resource, prior to destroying the resource, we, un we unhook the webhook from Telegram. So it kind of completely deals with the whole registration within, um, within Telegram, which has nothing to do with Amazon. So that's quite fun. I've hidden some secrets here. You can create variables um, to pass in, so I don't have to hard code them in here. Um, this is our Terraform Lambda configuration. Um, this is a bit of fun as well, but you can, you can create, use this thing called a data archive file within Terra, uh, Ter uh, Terraform which will create you a zip file essentially and do all that funky stuff for you. Um, and create us a Lambda up in Am Amazon. Does everyone knows what a Lambda is in Amazon? I'll briefly say it's, it's kind of a serverless resource. It spins up, it does a function and then it disappears again. So it's completely serverless and essentially like a function in the cloud that you can call and you can write them in many languages. We're gonna use Node today. Um, and here's where we set, if it runs for longer than 900 milliseconds, then kill it um, and it should have this memory and we're only going to have one concurrent execution of this at any one time. Um, and we'll pass some variables through, so this is where we can pass to our secrets. So, Telegram token here, so we can call back to the bot as we do our things and say, oh, I've done this, I've done that. Um, and so there's two bits of authentication being passed through there. These are the things that, when we'd used the bot father earlier, it returned us, so we put those in there. 
um, and we've got the name of the, the Bastion Auto Scaling Group that we created previously. And this is the polling piece. Um, so this is gonna run every minute. So this is a CloudWatch event rule, it's kind of like a cron. You can actually put cron-like expressions in here if you like, it's gonna do it every minute for us, all the time. And it's gonna point at the same lambda, basically. And then there's a bit of permissions to make sure that's to allow it to be run from this, from this rule. Okay, see so where it starts to get a little more tricky. So we're gonna run this in. Where are we? So this is, and I'll, I'll walk you through the node thing. Well, this one takes a little bit longer. As this runs through, we'll see it coming to life over on the right-hand side. So this is, tele, this is a kind of a slightly minimized telegram over on the right-hand side here. So when, when the bot comes to life, it will say, hello. So um, we'll wait for that. But it takes, this takes a little bit longer. So we'll move on through the deck while we're waiting for that. So we'll just let this run. So you can see it's creating, it's pulling, it, it's pulling in the bastion. It's telling me what it's gonna do again here. So it's gonna create me all this stuff. Here, these are the lambdas. It goes on and on. API Gateway has a lot of resources. I won't bore you with that. Um, so let's let it go. Here it goes. So it's creating some stuff, creating the, the roles, creating, you can see what it's doing. Right, we'll, we'll go, we'll come back to this and we'll listen out for when, I'll leave my phone here too, because Telegram's on here. We'll hear when it comes to life. And we'll move on through this bit. So this is actually the the Node.js code. So I thought it was worth highlights on this as well. There's a bit of junk around this, but this is kind of the interesting stuff. Um, this is this is our um, this is how we're going to do our reinvoke essentially, right? So if if there's no body, if there's a body rather, it's come from Telegram. So therefore, we'll do our invoke, and we'll have a look at that in a second. Otherwise, it's our schedule event. Otherwise, it's a direct call from the scheduler. So there's the three cases there. So one's invoked from Telegram, one's it's reinvoked itself, and the third is on the one minute poll. This is the one that's coming in from Telegram. So a, bit, a little bit of logging here, parse the message, check it's me, um, stop any of you guys trying to mess around with my Bastion hosts while we're doing this. Um, so I just got hard-coded ID for me and, um, and then reinvoke ourselves here. So this is the kind of reinvoke thing. So it does authorization, reinvoke. And this is actually then the second call. So it comes back in here. So now I've got this method. We'll, we'll look at this in a little bit more detail in a second. But this is sending, sending information back to Telegram. So this is kind of making it a bit more human. Um, there's a double array here. This allows, when there's an array like this, it's going to pick a random one of these. This allows you to make it a bit more fun, right, by giving it different, um, different strings to say. So if you look quickly here, it's going to set the capacity to one in the auto scaling group. It's going to kind of wait now. It's going to wait loop while that creates. It can take a little while. Um, Pause for effect, so there's a bit of randomness built in here between five, uh, you know, five seconds and ten seconds, and then we'll send one of these message messages back while we're waiting, and then we're done. And so the last thing it's going to send is one of this. It's going to pass me the IP address that it's just created dynamically for the Bastion server, and we'll be able to SSH to that hopefully and see it all working. Um, this is the one from the scheduled um, poll. I'm surprised we haven't been spoken at. Maybe we were. Yeah, okay, good. I didn't notice, but uh, hello, I'm alive and watching. Good, I thought that was good. That's good news. Um, so this is if it comes from the scheduled poll on the one minute poll. So we go and get all the, any instances that are running here and we have a look to see if it's one of our bastions. And if it is, we close it, set it, close it down. And okay, so this is the, a little module just on, to on for top of Telegram to make it a little bit more fun. Pause for effects, basically does a random sleep. Um, to kind of have a bit of life in here. This is kind of interesting here, send chat action. You'll see this, it's a, a tiny little thing here, but when you send this to Telegram, it just puts in the top typing. So you know if someone's like, when you want someone messaging, you're waiting for them to respond and they're not responding and you wonder why they're not responding, and then suddenly it goes typing and you're like, okay, they've got the message. Well, that does that, right? So it just sets it to that. So human-wise, you go, oh, okay, right, it's working. So I'm, I've got that for me, so I can not panic when I run this thing and it start, it's doing that. Then it goes and picks a random phrase from the list that we passed in, a bit more pausing, and then it sends a message. So this makes it kind of a little bit more real, hopefully. All right, the moment of truth. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna ask Roz to break the glass and um, let's just do it and I'll talk it through. So typing, typing, oh, you got a message, good. Right, um, okay, opening the bastion now. So, request made. So in that code, you notice, that's when it set the scaling group to one. 
and it's now polling that because it takes a little bit of time in Amazon for this to happen. So we're kind of waiting for, it, for Amazon to create up this EC2 instance. Hopefully it will. We've got the random phrases to keep give us less anxiety. You can see again, typing comes up every so often. A couple more minutes now. I'd probably tell a joke here if I could think of one. Um, we could take a question. <laughs> Anyone got one now? You've got a minute. <laughs> time to time. How trust? How, how does Telegram trust you? So you, so you pass, um, when you did the bot father thing, we got an authentication token then. And that's the authentication token you pass when you talk back. And when you do the set webhook, you have to pass it in at that point. So you, at the point of setting the webhook, you get, that's the authentication from Telegram's perspective. When it sends you stuff, it sends you keys as well, and you can validate those as well. And you also get user information. So in my case, I was just checking against a hard-coded user, but you could look that up in Active Directory or anything you want really to see. Okay, we've created a Bastion server, and we have one minute to access the Bastion server before the Bastion server gets killed. So let's see if we can. And if this works, then this is where the big, enormous round of applause occurs, I think. Um, but let's see, right? Okay, good, good, good. And we're in, we're in. Hooray! Yeah. Right, okay. So, so from here, this is where you would, you would access your servers and you do all this stuff. Now, we've got a minute, right? But Ros is going to keep looking at this now. And then in a minute, I'm going to, forget, of course, forgotten. Now, I've, I've got to my Bastion server. I've now opened up all this stuff. And I'm going to go and make a coffee now. And now we're in a vulnerable situation for all the hackers to come and attack our system. But, but don't worry, because Ros is watching. And pretty soon, over there, she's going to go, hang on, you've left this open. This is where the second round of applause occurs. Um, and this is, oh, typing, typing. Oh, it's been open, All right? It's been open for too long, I'm closing it. And so what should happen over here is we'll get booted off this server when it, as it gets just completely destroyed from Amazon. And so, we're waiting over here. So this is Amazon, he's always, there we go, boom. So Amazon, we set the autoscaling group to zero and Amazon killed the server. And we're all done. So just so that's the the, the demo bit. So relief there. Um, so really, just a final tip on this. There's a couple of things really. These chatbots are great, and I can't really quantify why. But but when I've worked with big, I work with big enterprises, and we we use a chatbot for a, a well-known fast food establishment, and we monitored sales of their things and when problems occurred we could ask the bot to close stores to give us data on sales and stuff like that once we had the bot in place the ceo used to talk to the bot to do these things the ceo would close the store so on the ceo getting on the phone and telling someone and then the po to phones the next guy and the, the next guy phones finally gets someone out of bed to close the store in oxford the CEO would just close, it's snowing, I'm going to close the snow store in Oxford, and he'd ask the bot and close the store. So as soon as you create a bot to do your DevOps tasks, it kind of democratizes the data and it democratizes the process, and kind of anyone in your team suddenly can get involved in DevOps, whether they're a developer or a CEO. Um, so create a persona though, think about the dialogue, it keeps it fun, makes people just interact with it actually, um, and add variety and add, add, add the pauses um, to make it real. It's, um, it's a really great thing, and it's actually, I I've, I've do a lot of these DevOps transformations and you've created dashboards. First thing you do, and the CEOs love the dashboard, and you put the dashboard, and I really should take some photos because no one looks at the dashboard. The dashboard will be on fire and everyone's just tapping away with their hands on, right? <laughs> looking at the thing. As soon as the chatbot comes and tells you there's a problem, there's like a personal thing suddenly. Oh my God, the chatbot, I better, better please the chatbot. You know, there's some kind of human thing that kind of crazily kicks in here. Um, and, and it's just great. And it becomes the aggregator actually of all your stuff, whether it's from Amazon, Google, um, elastic whatever services you're using you can kind of aggregate your your processes um, and and kind of combine them all in your chapel that is my stuff you can see the code here you can find me on twitter or linkedin or out there thank you <laughs>